Hello everyone, welcome to episode 6 of Going the Distance. I'm Nicholas Delgado, and I'm your host for everything to do with high school running in Central Illinois. Make sure to follow on Instagram at GoingTheDistanceIL and tune in every Wednesday for a new episode. We're going to keep today's episode a little bit shorter and sweet as we move into the postseason and covering some of the first October meets. And next week we will be having a larger episode featuring a person from hopefully every single team in the conference. So make sure to tune in next Wednesday um, and look forward to that. It should be an awesome episode. Lots of information should be revealed, and we should have some great discussions there. But to start today's episode, let's start with the previous week's meets. The Peoria High invite located at Detweiler Park took place again this year. Super fast times. Great weather. It was foggy in the morning, but cleared up for the 3A race and became a little summy in about 65, I think. But for the 1A, 2A section, Marion wins with 136 points, just over normal U-High with 152 points. The junior Dylan Alley from Marion drops an insanely impressive 14.03.49. That is one of the fastest junior times on that course ever, especially if the sense it was not at a state meet. That's impressive. A lot to come. Maybe he'll break 14 at state, depending on the conditions. But we'll have to look for. We'll have to wait and see for that. But he definitely has the potential to do that, and then he has all of next year as well. So Dylan Alley is just an absolute beast. It was so fun getting to watch him tear up the course like that. Behind him was Gavin Geneseo, who finished at a 14:37, which he ran an exceptionally good race too. But compared to Dylan Alley, it was just. I, he just got blown out of the water, which rightfully so. I mean, 14.03 is just crazy. For the 3A section, Winnetka New Trier wins uh, with 68 points over Maine South with 83 points. Pretty tight there. Um, the junior from Naperville, Nikwa Valley, uh, Zach Close, he wins the 3A section in 14.33.93, which, to put in perspective, is 30 seconds slower than Dylan Alley. Dylan Alley just tore up Detweiler on Saturday. But with great conditions, lots of super fast times were dropped. And lots of PRs set. Really couldn't have asked for a better day to run that meet. Moving on, the Elmwood hosted their invite. Eureka wins that one with 63 points, just over Elmwood themselves with 85 Charlie Bell- Bardwell, the senior of Eureka, wins this meet by just slightly. He wins in 15.38 flat, just over Sam Springer, the junior of Delavan, in 15.38.4. So super close there. Another important meet to cover with Elmwood in it is the Prairie Land Conference, which took place last Tuesday, September 27th. Elmwood sweeps 1-6, through six, not their 7, but 1-6, through six, and their whole scoring 5, and wins with a 15 points, complete sweep of conference. Just exceptional performance from them. Isaiah Hilda Jr. leads their team and wins conference in 15.51.9 by about a minute, 50, 55 seconds. And moving on to a couple not local meets. The Pat Savage Invite up north, Oswego East, wins with 94 points just in front of St. Ignatius with 100 points. The senior from Oswego East, Parker Nold, wins in 14.56.69 over the three-mile course. Now, let's talk about the Lyle main event, also up north. It is a 5K course, and Riverside Brookfield takes the win with only 44 points over Glenbard South with 64 points. Very tight race there, but both 2A teams leading over the rest of the field. The senior from Elgin Harvest Christian Academy, Daniel Winkleman, who dropped an impressive 5K time, a couple weeks ago, dropped another impressive 5K time. He ran, he covered the course in 1542.2 seconds. And he wins the meet just over Bryson Grant, the senior of Irocus West, in 1548.7. I, that is definitely not how you say it, but I butchered the name of that school. That's my fault. Now, finally, the last meet I want to cover from this week is a Nike Cross Country Town Twilight Invitational down in Terre Haute, Indiana. At Cross Country Town USA, super awesome meet. I've run at that course. The course is not the most easy course, but, you know, still a fun meet. We've never run there, but definitely a lot of crazy times were chopped. 
Um, Notre Dame, who showed up there, definitely had some impressive times. Uh, Andrew Elward leading them with a 16.53, which translates low 16, if not even sub, to Detweiler times. And I know he ran low 16s at Detweiler Dark, but hasn't managed to get down there yet during the regular season. So great race from him. And top time from Illinois there was a 1458.95K by Dan Watke, the senior of Hinsdale Central. Uh, second from Illinois is Cameron Vigier, junior, playing field south. He ran that. He covered the distance of 15.05.4. Um, their team, playing field south, led the teams from Illinois. They placed third overall, obviously led by Cameron Vigier. Um, and they performed up to standard. They lost to Jesuit of Louisiana and Carmel from Indiana, both which are going to probably be a Nike Nationals this year. But Plainfield South really putting together a great team this year. Hopefully, you know, it would be awesome to say that we've raced against them and if they make it to Nationals. So I am cheering for them, especially since we don't have to race them in state because they're 3A. That would be not fun. Now moving on to the individual performances. This week, lots of fast weekly top times. For the whole state and 1A, Gavin Geneseo, the junior Benton, keeps his weekly top time. He's faster than last week, though. 1437.1 set it at the Peoria Invite on Saturday. The first, same thing with Dylan Nally. He, he, well, he regains his spot, but same meet, Peoria High Invite on October 1st. He ran a 1403.5, super impressive. The junior for Marion is just tearing it up this year. And finally, also at the Peoria Invite on Saturday, Zach Close, the junior from Naperville, Nickel Valley, is the one who will capture the 3A weekly top time this week. He ran a 14.34 flat and a 15-second PR for him. That updates the season top times. Finally, Isaac Teal from Detweiler Dark has been dethroned by Gavin Geneseo, the junior from Benton, with his 1437.1 the Peoria invite super impressive performance from him hopefully we'll get to see Isaac Teal come back up to Detweiler soon I don't know if they come up before state but either way he's been tearing it up at his own meets even if he hasn't been dropping crazy times no courses like Detweiler so he's been winning everything they've both been performing exceptionally well what really what will really come down to is that state championship and both of them being juniors it'll definitely be a battle for sure uh, 3A top time stays the same. Cameron Vigier, nobody is able to dethrone him. Even Zach Close, he was 12 seconds off. But still impressive time from him. So he stay, So Cameron Vigier stays up there from Plainfield South, the junior, with his 14.22 from the first to the finish. And I think I skipped two. So Dylan Nally, the junior from Marion, he, uh, oh, he, re, he regains his spot with the 14.03.5. Well, no, he was already in that spot. He just, he upgraded his time. He was the 1438 from Granite City. Now he, with his 1403 from Peoria invite, he has regained or re-upgraded his time with an exceptional performance. That probably will not be dethroned unless he himself runs faster. So, in my opinion, or looking ahead, my prediction is Dylan Alley is going to have the top time this year. For 2A. 1A is up for grabs, really. 3A, eh, stay. Once you get to state, it'll definitely be up for grabs. But I think Cameron Vigier will keep it. It's just whether. It's, how, it's, whether it's how fast he goes, really. It'll be a battle between him, Zach Close, Dan Watke, a couple other strong 3A runners to dip into the low 14s at the state meet this year. Given the right conditions, of course. Now let's move on to the Runner of the Week segment. Josh Weeks, the junior from Morton, is who I'm giving the local Runner of the Week to. And he just had an impressive performance this week at the Peoria High Invitational. He dipped under 15 for the first time for the 15-second PR. He ran a 14.56.5, placing 6th in the 3A section because Morton put their team in the 3A section instead of the 1A, 2A section. He led his team to 13th in the 3A section, even though not everyone on his team had a performance like they wanted to. And for just Josh, it's already been an exceptional season, but as we keep going, we still got a month left, so 
the times the potential he has so much potential to drop some crazy times coming up through conference regional sectional state so definitely keep an eye on him as we move into the postseason for the state runner of the week i gave it to zach close the junior from neighborville Nickel valley he won the 3a section of the peoria invite in 1434 flat it's the second dip under 15 this, se 15 this season but it is still a 15 second pr he led his team to third in a super tough field at the Peoria Invite. It is so hard to win that invite. Lots of strong people, especially with everybody running really fast. I gave it to him not only because he had the fastest time and he won the meet, but just the competition to win against like that is just super impressive. So great times from him. Also, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but runners of the week, I try to keep them for, I'm going to keep them so nobody repeats per season. So... Like, I won't, you, Josh Weeks will never be the local runner of the week again this season, and Zach Close won't be the state runner of the week this season. Just wanted to put that out there because there are definitely some other people that could deserve it, <laughs> Dylan Alley, but he's already won it. I don't want to give it to the same person, like, 10 times in a season just because they're fast, so I go through and pick out another deserving candidate because there are so many. This cross-country season is very stacked for all three classes. Now moving into our fairly new segment, Conference Corner. The Middle Line I Conference. Morton just keeps lowering their score. There's nothing else to say. Um, 24 points now is what they're supposed to win conference in. They lead Dunlap with 63 and Metamora with 84. Metamora jumps ahead of Washington, who is now at 114. Their whole top seven PR'd at the Peoria invite. Super impressive performances from all of them. Definitely a great day to do that. Washington did not run, so... We don't exactly know what they're at right now, but Metamore Washington could still be close, but we only have two weeks until the actual meet, so we'll just have to keep our eye on that. East Peoria right behind at 133 and Pekin at 134, but Morton still has that one, two, three punch with Josh Weeks leading now by 33 seconds with a 1456.5 over Jonas Butrich, the junior, with a 1529.1. The one, two, three punts is Josh Jonas Chase. And Leighton Can Canoop did not have the race he wanted to have on Saturday at the Peoria Invite. No PR, just really down race for him. But he will definitely be coming out strong to regain his spot in that one, two, three. And it is possible that Morton can go one through four in conference. And if they can get their fifth runner up there, they could sweep. But you never know. There's The middle line of conference is strong individually. Right behind the one, two, three pack, we have Aiden Moore from Dunlap running up fifteen forty two now. So it's going to be very tough for anybody to just completely blow away this conference. Besides the one, two, three punch of Morton, just kind of carries the team right there. The HOY conference: El Paso Gridley and Eureka. The gap closes, but Gridley, El Paso Gridley, still in the lead, thirty one to thirty six. Hayworth right behind at eighty eight. Mackinac Deer Creek at 120, Tri Valley at 136, and Tremont at 159, all right behind each other. Eureka and El Paso still looking to be very close to the conference meet, unless El Paso Gridley's five can drop a faster time. If he if he can just get down like 20 seconds, he'll pick up so many places, it won't even be close. But same goes for Eureka. They they've got room to move, so. The individually individual wise, it, the conference is led by Sam Busher, the senior from El Paso Gridley, in fifteen ten point two, over the senior Charlie Barwell of of Eureka, in fifteen twenty nine point six. Now the Big Twelve Conference, Champaign Central leads the team scores thirty with thirty nine points. They lead Normal Community with seventy one, who passed Peoria Notre Dame with seventy nine. Now, Peoria Notre Dame does not have any three-mile times for this week, like normal community, who ran at the super fast Peoria invite. Notre Dame ran at the twilight meet, like I mentioned earlier, so they have 5K times, but they're looking to be strong, so that battle for second, maybe even first, if Notre Dame can push up with Champaign Central, could be pretty close as we head into a couple weeks when their conference will take place on Saturday the 15th at Wilder Park. Individually, the conference is led by the freshman Caleb Mathias of uh, Champaign Central now over Sky Riddle, the senior Normal Community West. Mathias leads fifth with a 15-20.8 over Riddle's 15-33 flat. 
Now moving out of all of these times, we're going to look at the weekly outlook and some of the upcoming needs. There are only three big ones I really want to cover. It's kind of a, it seems to be kind of a down week if you look at the athletic on that event section, but still some big meets, such as Wednesday the 5th, the day that this podcast will come out, the Naperville Twilight Invite, where they finish on the football field. I've seen clips at the end. It looks so cool. Wish we got to run in something like that, but obviously we can't go up to Naperville in the middle of the week. But lots of strong 3A teams going to be there. Downers Grove North, Hinsdale Central, Manuka, Naperville, Naquil Valley, and Oak Park River Forest. All super strong. Going to be a battle there for the boys' title. The Running Red Invited Menomora takes place on Saturday. This is the big local meet of this week. Limestone, Canton, Dunlap, East Peoria, Metamora, Washington, all local teams going to be there. We also have Champaign Central, ranked 7th in state this week according to Mile Split. Glenbard South, who is 11th according to Mile Split. Morton ranked 3rd according to Mile Split. And then Strong 1A Team U High, Strong 3A Team Com- Normal Community, and Strong 3A Team Oswego East along with Peoria Notre Dame. All going to be, it's going to be a, some really fierce competition there on the 2.94 mile course. So times are going to be a little fast because it is a short course. But nonetheless, racing will not change. So keep an eye out on that meet. That is going to be a real battle for those team titles and individual titles with Josh Weeks probably going to be up there with Parker Nold. And finally, the Sterling invite this Saturday also. Sterling's going to be there with Dale Johnson dipping under 15 for the first time this past weekend also. Sycamore will be there, Maple Park, Kayland, and 10th ranked in state by mile split, Oak Park, Fenwick. Bringing back Graydon Rill and Nathaniel McKillop in the past couple weeks. They're looking pretty strong again, having their full three All-Staters back and running. Not necessarily at uh, full potential, but running nonetheless, dropping impressive times. But... That seems to be it for this podcast today. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and listening. It has been a pleasure recording this. I know it was a bit of a short episode, but expect a great episode next week with a sit-down conversation with the Middle Eye Night Conference as we discuss some plans for the teams as we head into postseason and ultimately the conference race where we're all going to be duking it out for that title. And we should gain a lot of information by that. But today we covered some previous week's meets, next week's meets, and some insane new top times dropped from the Peoria High Invite. So thank you for tuning in once again. I appreciate everybody listening. Make sure to follow on Instagram at GoingTheDistanceIL. Everything you would need is in the link tree in that bio. Make sure to tune back every tune in every Wednesday. New episode will drop. And next week... Like I said, it's going to be a big episode. Don't want to miss it. Thank you all for watching or listening. Have a great rest of your day. It's been Nicholas Delgado and on the Going the Distance podcast.